I've been practicing medicine for over 25 years and I've seen it. The world is hurting, people are sick, and even with our greatest scientific discoveries and technological breakthroughs, trends in health are not getting better. We weren't designed for this. This world as we know it, it's not our home. But there is a remedy. Our Creator designed us to be resilient creatures, and He's given us clues in the scriptures that have dramatic implication for our lives today. Let's talk about biblical prescriptions. Let's take a serious look at living as God intended. Are you ready? Let's get well, and let's go home. Welcome to the Biblical Prescriptions for Life podcast presented by HeartWise Ministries. I'm your host, Nick Evanson, here with Dr. James L. Markham, author of the seven-week Bible study program, Biblical Prescriptions for Life. On today's program, we'll be discussing God's role in our healthcare plan and learning how to follow His plan for our lives. The advice given in this podcast is not intended to replace the care of your primary physician, and Dr. Markham insists that listeners talk with their doctors before making changes to their health care regimen. If you like what you hear on today's podcast, we ask that you leave us a five-star review on iTunes or Stitcher or whatever platform you're listening on. Dr. Markham, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Nick. It's nice to be joining you to talk about something I find very passionate about. You know, in the office, um, they we see lots of patients, mm -hmm. and sometimes you don't get to talk about these bigger issues and you know you know in greater detail. So I'm glad we have the podcast and someone can, wherever they're listening, they can listen to it over and over. If they want to reach out to their friends and neighbors with this type of a message, they can do that. Mm -hmm. um, and you talked about the disclaimer there up front about we don't want this to be instead of your doctor's advice. Well, you know, I want it to be the great physician, Christ, to be your doctor's advice. And you yeah. to go there first, too, mm -hmm. to look for answers. And it's not about what I say. Um, it's, it's, it's about what, where God leads you. And, you know, yeah. not everyone's the same. Everyone has sort of a different formula for health, for healing, for relationships. And, you know, and that's as people realize this, you know, and they realize that relationships are different for different people and they grow at different rates and at right. different speeds and in different ways. This is not static at all. It, it becomes much more exciting. So it's my pleasure to be here. And what are we going to talk about today? Yeah, so today we're going to get right into it, jump into the Affordable Care Act. We're going to talk about health care a little bit here. Health care, you know, uh, before you do Affordable <laughs> Care Act, that's a pretty serious subject, it especially is. Um, stuff. I would rather talk about that picture you showed me of your boys, um, your two boys. Yep. Um, Hayden and, and Corbin. In the tub. That yep. was a good picture. They were singing Happy Birthday. Yeah, yeah, it was my niece's birthday, so we shot a little video on the, on the cell phone and sent it over to her. And uh, Hayden's favorite song in the world right now is "Happy Birthday." That's he wants to song. sing it every day. It seems like yeah. so. Yeah. So uh, they, and, they enjoyed that. And the reason I bring that up is because whenever everyone talks about politics and affordable mm -hmm. care is politics, people get real serious. That's right. So as we talk about this, I want you to think about two boys naked in the tub <laughs> singing happy birthday. That'll sort of give Lighten a balance. The mood. And they'll yeah. let us know, you know, those are the important things. You know, the Affordable Care Act, you know, that's important and we're talking about it and it's all over the news, but mm -hmm. people are fighting and getting mean about it and that's doing right. all yep. sorts of bad things. And I'd be happy to give my perspective on that, but I just don't want us to take it too seriously. I just want us to think more about the happy birthday times. That's right. We don't want to get too bogged down with uh, one side or the other side. So if of the we argument. had questions, where, where should we start? This is a big topic, well, Nick. I want you to set the stage. Yeah. Okay. In in America, where are we at as a nation with our health? Okay. Our country is the highest spending nation on earth. We spend mm -hmm. more money on technology and healthcare and hospitals and medicines and taking care of our, our than any other country, okay? Mm -hmm. That's by far true. And yet our healthcare isn't the best. In fact, we're pretty well down the list on quality of care. Mm. Um, now for the next generation of, of young people, they're actually gonna have less longevity than their parents have. That statistic has just come out. And a lot of it because of chronic disease. So just because we have health care mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's better health care. Right. That's one point. So any health care plan, if it doesn't address the cause, it's not going to be successful. And so we spend a lot of money mm -hmm. and we don't get solutions. We just treat symptoms. 
And we have this mindset that if we treat symptoms, we're getting good quality of care. But I want to throw out there, but any type of Affordable Care Act, we need to incorporate treating solutions rather than tr just treating symptoms. Now, to do that, that's hard, and it and it and it bites into profits, and it mm -hmm. takes time. Mm -hmm. It takes a different mindset. It takes a different media. It takes different insurance companies. Remember, insurance companies make money on people being sick right. and getting yeah. premiums and raising premiums. Pharmaceutical makes money of people being sick. Hospitals, doctors, we all make money off being sick. Mm -hmm. we, no one's making money off people being well. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't tell the truth. So if, if the affordable care plan is going to be affordable long term, they have to give the opportunity and incentives incentives to treat the cause of disease for people to actually get well yes incentives whether right. that be a tax break you know you're going to get a tax break if you will exercise a couple times a week mm -hmm. and nowadays mm -hmm. with apps and different ways there's ways to follow these things mm -hmm. you know sure. if you get down to ideal body weight or if your blood sugar you know these parameters that measure chronic disease if we can do that successfully you're going to get rewarded mm -hmm. instead of treating the chronic disease which we've talked about previously makes up a large amount of our expenditures so worldwide we're not doing this very well i had the opportunity to visit New Zealand not too long ago. Mm -hmm. In fact, my daughter is going to be t taking, spending a semester abroad, and she's going to go down to um, New Zealand and learn a little bit more about how they run that country. But so, that, so real quick, why New Zealand? Well, a couple reasons. Um, one is her other option was Copenhagen, Denmark. She's uh -huh. studying international studies. Okay. So dad really wanted a safe country that spoke English um, that, that would give her a different perspective. And she's studying some sustainable living, you know, an outdoorsy country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, and it's- New Zealand sounds like a pretty good option. It's a beautiful country. It's, and so the, how about the health there? Yeah, the health there. Now they are, they're, they're a socialized system. Mm -hmm. Okay. That means they take care of everybody, mm -hmm. but they promote- they promote prevention. They give incentives to stay well. And one of the incentives is stay alive. You yeah, know, yeah. if you're above a certain age and you have a chronic disease, well, we're going to give you this, this, and this. But if you don't have this, we're going to give you, and everyone understands that. It's for the good of everyone. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, healthcare is for everyone. We're going to take care of the emergencies. But if you do certain things, we're going to reward certain things. And as a result, they don't have near the chronic disease that we do. Now, this would never fly here. You know, they don't right. have the smoking yeah. rates. They don't have the obesity rates. Mm -hmm. You know, they have healthier foods. So, you know, but that system is, is it's not a profit-based system. It's a care for everyone system. Mm -hmm. So when you remove some of the profits out of the system, um, caring for everybody, sort of sort of like a biblical plan, you know, caring for people mm -hmm. um, and giving them the truth, you know, and not giving them a bunch of things that, that make money, but maybe not make them get at the core of the problem, then things start to get better. So that model really works there. Now, do they still have disease? Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. But their sure. health care costs, their, their quality of life are good. You know, the longevity is good. So those countries that have that model tend to do better. Singapore is another small country that does very good. You know, if you're going to smoke cigarettes, they're going to either tax you or, you know, if you do drugs, they're going to have severe penalties. They're going to tax unhealthy foods, you know, all these processed foods. Well, they're going to make them too expensive to eat. So, you know, when an apple costs a tenth of what an apple pie costs, what are people going to eat? Mm -hmm. So they yeah. incentivize healthy living. You know, when you don't have, when you make it profitable to have bikes and bike paths and exercise and, and different things where people move and have breaks during the work day for people to get outside, have desks that are treadmill desks, mm -hmm. you know, uh, basically outlaw smoking or make it too expensive for happening, then all these chronic diseases start to go down. That's the mindset if we want to solve the problem that we have to start moving towards. Then we, we, we don't need to necessarily call it an Affordable Care Act. We need to call it doing what's right. And we've moved away from that. And it's been, it's no one's fault. It's just all these factors that pulled together and now it's turned into politics. You know, everyone's mm -hmm. fighting about it and my plan's better than your plan or this right. plan won't work mm -hmm. or this is gonna hurt this group or this is gonna hurt that group or this people won't get that. And it's just real sad. And now we spend so much time fighting, no one's really talking about the solutions to, to what we need to do. But that shouldn't discourage us. That shouldn't discourage us. We should be, we should be encouraged. And the reason we should be encouraged because we know 
where we can find truth. We know where, even though the world won't do it, we know as an individual, we know where we can find the ultimate position with the ultimate health plan for our lives and we can start moving that direction. Not that we'll never need the healthcare system, but we can do something individually to move in that direction. And that's what I wanna encourage everyone today. The Affordable Care Act is to get back into God's word. Let him be your physician. Let him lead you on all these biblical prescriptions to promote health that he's given to us in the Bible and through a relationship with him. So I think you just kind of answered it, but yeah. my, my next question was going to be, if well executed, which the yeah. discussions in Washington recently haven't been super uh, productive, it doesn't seem, but if well executed, can the government fix our health care problems? No, I don't think so. I mean, they can, well, you know, they could point us in the right direction if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. But even, you know, let me give you an example, Nick. Um, in the 50s, okay, everyone, a lot of people smoked cigarettes. It was an epidemic. Doctors yeah. were smoking, everyone was smoking. The Journal of the American Medical Association said cigarettes should be used as a treatment for asthma. And the word got out. Smoking caused heart attacks, smoking caused cancer. It contributed to a lot of health problems. And everyone knows that now. It's on every cigarette package. And yet today, 20% of people still smoke despite of all that. Mm -hmm. So despite the government telling people what was dangerous, guess what? One in five still smoke. Right. In China, they know it too. We have a billion people in China smoking cigarettes because we've shipped over mm -hmm. you know, our culture to them and promoted it and, and, yep. and advertised it. It's a cool thing to do. And smoking has an addictive property. It does make people feel a little bit high, but it's not a healthy thing. But even though our government has said it's bad, people still do it. Right. And you know, that's, that, that's gonna apply no matter what the health plans, are. even though they say it's bad, you know, people might do it less, but people still have a free choice to live their lives the way they wanna do it. Mm -hmm. um, so now that's why I think incentivization is gonna be very important. The same with biblical prescription. You know, the God of heaven has given us a, a, an owner's manual, a medical app that told us this is what's best for you. You know, this is, I designed you, this is best for you, this is what's gonna help you feel better and do better, and yet even when that's told to people, some people choose not to do it. Right. You know, yeah. but it's a, it's a free choice, even though this has been recommended way back at creation, Daniel's study reminded us of, of eating, how important that is. We've talked about rest and being happy and all these biblical prescriptions, and yet we're moving away from that. It's a choice. So can the government mandate health? No, but you know, each individual can do the best they can within the system that they live in. You know, not everyone, Nick, has access to different foods. You know, I have some people that come to the web and ask a question and say, all I have to eat is this. Then I said, well, I'd rather you eat that than starve. Mm -hmm. You know, we do yeah. the best we can in the situation that God puts us on. But as long as we have him, we can start moving in the right direction. Yeah, that's right. You know, um, you put it, you put out a video on Facebook mm -hmm. uh, just uh, just recently about God and your healthcare, and and shared some ideas in there. But let's share it with the podcast listeners. Um, how do you make that practical? God and your healthcare. What does that look like? Part of it's education. You know, where where are you going to get your information from? Mm -hmm. um, are you going to believe the internet? Are you going to believe everything out there? Or, or are you are you going to sort of march to a higher power? So, and people have to have this desire to do better and to, to want something more. People need motivation. Yes, mm -hmm. and the first thing I, I encourage them to do, I said, listen, you know, go find out what truth is yourself. You know, ask God to help you. Ask him to, 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 to be leader of your healthcare. Ask him to be your ultimate physician. So personal study. Yes, personal study, personal prayer, mm -hmm. personal involvement in your healthcare. And some people don't even realize that God is interested in your health. And it's part of being, you know, taking care of your body is part mm -hmm. of taking care of what's been given to you by God. It's a purpose. Sometimes people don't even believe in a God that I talk to. And sometimes I say, listen, are you interested in, in knowing that the Bible's true? And I talk to them about how we can have the evidence that the Bible is true. Um, but as, as people learn and grow, what we've tried to do as a ministry is we've tried to give them tools that they can try it out for themselves. Right. Well, here's a biblical prescription. Here's the evidence behind it. Why don't you try to incorporate this to the, your, in your life and see if it helps you feel better? 
-hmm. And that biblical prescription might be eating greens. It might be going outside and walking. It might be saying happy words. It might be um, laughing. Um, It might be being nice and hugging your neighbor or serving a friend. Um, There's lots of biblical prescriptions that are out there. And as people do this and see God working with them, then changes occur. And they say, you know, I do feel better. God is helping me to make changes. I'm going to try the next step. Yes, by doing this, my blood pressure has come down as I've prayed and I've I've turned to God for help. My stress level has gone down. Yes, as I've taken a day off, I do feel better. The parts feel better. I feel renewed. So this is sort of an approach that people can use to gradually introduce this into their lives. So just to recap that, People need to be motivated, have a reason to act. Mm -hmm. They need personal study and prayer and study. We're talking about study in the Bible as well. Relationship with God. Relationship Mm -hmm. with God. And then what was the other component? And then what we do after that is we give them tools. You know, not everyone can find tools themselves. You know, they need tools and we've got the tools and at our website, Mm -hmm. we also have a a Bible study that people can take. That's right. um, Add that to their regimen. There's videos. They they can learn this different method of treating health. I mean, this is really God being involved and leading you. Does that mean you can't have doctors and modern medicine? No, not at all. There's a place for that, mainly Mm -hmm. for treating acute emergencies, but not reversing chronic disease. Right. Yep. Dr. Markham, we did a, uh, a biblical prescription video spot recently mm-hmm. um, that talks about this very thing of God in your health care. And uh, let's go ahead and have a listen to that now. I'm Dr. James Markham. Are you walking in the dark when it comes to your health? Is it hard for you to find the authoritative voice when it comes to health? Our biblical prescription to answer these questions is Psalms 119.105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The Bible is a guide for every aspect of life, including health, relationships, and so much more. Christ has the authority to heal. Biblical prescriptions point us in this direction to thy word to help us along our path in life, the source of truth. We try to find supporting evidence, but even if the evidence has not been discovered, the Bible still is the source of truth. Your biblical prescription is use the word to improve your health and as your true north. I'm Dr. James Markham with your biblical prescription for life. So that, that's a really great message about having God as the leader of your health care. Yeah. Um, and that's something that we hope that you'll get on the website and find and share that on social media and share that with your friends and neighbors. And um, Dr. Markham, let's talk a little bit, let's talk a little bit more about that relationship. You mentioned recently about prayer and how inter- intercessory prayer can have uh, a lot of a lot of powerful yeah. healing well you know there's a there's a branch of medicine called integrative medicine mm-hmm. and integrative medicine I guess you could call what we're doing integrative medicine because we're integrating different things like nutrition and exercise and modern medicine and different aspects we're putting it all together to make a big picture But one of the largest components of integrative medicine now has been prayer. Mm -hmm. And it's been several studies have shown how prayer changes our physiology, lowers blood pressure, helps people recover from illness better, Mm -hmm. whether it be a bypass or, or arthritis or different things. Well, there's been a couple studies out there. These are hard studies to do. So when you pray for other people, even though they're not praying for themselves, even if they're not aware of that prayer, that intercessory prayer seems to help. And they study this in people that are sick in the hospitals, whether they get on and off ventilators in intensive care unit. They've studied groups that we had specific groups praying for them Mm -hmm. and the people that had no one praying for him. And they showed how they recover and the rates of the ventilator. And they, they designed the study in great detail. These studies are very complicated, but very important Mm -hmm. because everyone likes evidence-based medicine. And biblical prescriptions, um, it's when they have evidence, they even have more, I think, more pop to it. Um, everything that God says has a reason and is true, but when you can show the, the study behind it, it even adds more. So that's why I think that prayer is such a valuable 
pre- biblical prescription for life. Um, when we pray for each other, not only do we have God help us um, do things, um, he, he can heal in His way. He can touch us in ways that we can't even imagine. He That's can right. give us power that we don't even understand. Mm-hmm. And, and even though we don't understand it all in great detail, doesn't mean it's not happening. In fact, at HeartWise, one of the things that we do, um, that's the, the ministry that, that helps make biblical prescriptions for life. Mm-hmm. We have a webpage. And on that webpage, we have people that co- go in for prayer support. That's right. And so literally knowing that people are prayed for and praying for them themselves, that can change their physiology and chemistry in ways that we can't understand, only God understands. Right. Yeah. You know, that reminds me of uh, another research topic, Mm -hmm. uh, research project, actually, the one that you're kind of just getting started. Let's talk about that a little bit. What what are you interested in finding out? Uh, What kind of evidence are we hoping to find that that we can share with people? Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Nick, because we're going to start a study. We've already started it at HeartWise, designing a study that's very similar to what um, the the doctors at at, um, Harvard did, if you go, Herbert Benson. Um, and Jeffrey Dusek, that they came up with this 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 not too long ago. Genomic counter stress changes induced by the relaxation response. What does that mean? Yes, pretty big <laughs> words, isn't it? Well, basically, what they did was they studied DNA. Okay. You know, the DNA has now been sequenced by Francis Collins, so we know what happens in different situations. Mm-hmm. The study of what turns on and off DNA is sometimes termed epigenetics, what turns on the DNA. Right. We know that the factors that turn on DNA, turn off different enzyme systems and make things happen in the body are, are more than we can even understand, more complex than ever imagined. Mm-hmm. Well, he specifically um, taught people how to relax in certain ways. Um, one of these was through worship. The other one was from deep breathing. The other one was you know different ways of relaxing. Mm-hmm. And the, they studied the genetics. And he showed that when they did this, a lot of the stress genes changed expression. So by this relaxing response, he could lower the risk of heart attack, um, stress-related problems, aging, some of the chronic medical problems that we talked about just by this relaxation response. Mm-hmm. Well, others have done this type of study before in different ways. Um, you know, we have a, a researcher at University of Pennsylvania that did it with some brains. This study was only 19 people, but they looked at lots of different genes. We now can study this by a, a process called microarray analysis. So at HeartWise, we've decided to step out and do a study or attempt to do a study that no one's ever done before. And as you're hearing about this, we want your prayers and your support. If you want to be involved, let us know. Um, But what we're going to do is we're going to have people that have never worshipped before worship. Now, first, we're going to study the genes of people that worship every day. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to study the genes of people that have never worshipped before. We're going to teach them how to worship, not convert them. We're just going to give them worship material, biblical worship. And we're having theologians design what they consider biblical worship for for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. We're going to study their DNA, especially these stress genes. Then we can compare them to people that worship and don't worship. So we can know a little bit about the genetic expression. Then the next thing we're going to do is have them do it for 10 days. And then we're going to study their genes again. Why 10 days? Well, because that was the trial of nutrition study that Christ that Christ used in Daniel. Right. You know, did yeah. it for 10 days. Mm-hmm. Their countenance was better. They did better. They specifically said 10 days. Well, most of these studies that are published go for two months. So we're going to have to extend the study another six weeks and study them again mm-hmm. at the end of that time. Then we're going to see which genes are turned on. But wouldn't it be very powerful that we can say, you know, those that worship, even though they're not there's at worst worship general. Mm-hmm. We can not only study their genes, but we can actually study what happens in their lives. Mm. Wouldn't that yeah. be powerful? Yeah. We can see, you know, what what techniques help them, you know, and the people that worship for 10 days, are they willing to do it for the next six weeks? Do they embrace it? Mm-hmm. You know, does what does does things actually change? Even though necessarily they're not looking to worship, but they are by by following this plan, what happens to them? Right. Are they changed? 
Mm -hmm. So this is a very powerful study that hasn't really been done before. We're partnering with now two universities, to, one to help us to look at the genetics, another one to help us to understand the mental aspects. We have some theologians working on it, mm -hmm. and now we're setting up this to do. When it actually gets started, I'm not sure, because as we work on this study, it gets more involved. But yeah. we were hoping to publish this in major journals, and mm -hmm. now then we can go out and say, listen, um, you know, this is an aspect, we know it's true. Here's a biblical perspective. Yes. Oh, yeah. And here's some scientific right, evidence. Right. But we know it's true. Mm -hmm. We know that God says, you know, come unto me and right. I will give you rest. That's I'm right. going to help you when you worship me. When you enter into a relationship with me, there's going to be health benefits. There's going to be healing. Mm -hmm. um, not only permanent healing, but physical healing. Mm -hmm. Remember? Um, and this is a very exciting study that, that we're going to, we're, God's bringing people together to help. And if there's someone out there that wants to be a, um, a sponsor of this, we definitely need financial help. We definitely right. need prayers. We definitely need people that want to become involved. Yeah, we're just in the infancy yes. stage of, of conceptualizing the study. And uh, definitely reach out to us, biblicalprescriptions.com forward slash podcast. Send us your thoughts, your comments, your ideas. Uh, if you'd like to help support the project or get involved in some way, we'd love to hear from and you. And we're going to let people know how we're progressing as time moves on as well. But this is going right. to be a real adjunct to what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and wrap up the podcast here. But Dr. Markham, would you pray for our yeah, listeners first? Yeah. And specifically, not only our listeners, but I would like to pray for all those people that have written in to our website, heartwiseministries.org, and left a special prayer today. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to let them each know that we're praying specifically for them and that also that there is scientific evidence showing that there's, there's some change that happens when we pray not only ourselves, but when we pray for each other. That's right. So I know some people might not be able to bow our heads, but let's enter into a state of prayer. Father God, we want to thank you for being here with us and giving us life and giving us the ability to, through your son to have a relationship with the, the God of the universe. And we want to thank you for that so much and for, for giving us your son that we might have eternal life and salvation. Thank you. We want to praise you. We want to invite you to into our lives and let you know that you're Lord of our life. We want to ask for forgiveness of sin and let you sit on the throne of our hearts and change us, Father. And everyone out there, Father, has problems and concerns, and we want you to address each one in the specific way and come into their lives and be so close to them and let them know that they can experience healing. This healing might come in a relationship with you it might come in a physical form. It might become in a lifestyle change or a miracle, Father. We know that you have the power to heal the way you want to in your time. We want to thank you for this, Father, and give us encouragement and help us to realize that your love casts out all fear and gives us hope for the future. This is our prayer. Amen. Amen. And Dr. Markham, thank you so much for your insights mm -hmm. on uh, how God should be playing a role in our health care. And, uh, this is very much an affordable health care act. It's that's affordable. right. It's the most affordable yes. health care plan. <laughs> that's good. That's it's for most sure. affordable. And, but before they get off, don't forget, don't make it too serious. Remember that's the right. fun parts. Remember, keep happy light. birthday in the tub naked. That's right. That's with right. kids. That's right. Keep a, happy, keep a happy smile on your face. All right. Well, that's all the time we have today on today's podcast. Uh, but thank you for joining us. If you have a question about anything we've discussed today uh, or any comments, or if you want to help be part of our uh, research study, you can submit your questions and comments at biblicalprescriptions.com forward slash podcast. And uh, if you enjoyed the discussion today, please leave us a five-star review on iTunes or whatever podcasting platform you're listening on. That'll really help us out. And uh, thanks again for listening. I'm your host, Nick Evanson, inviting you to join us for another podcast next week, where we'll discuss more about getting well and going home.